Are you starting college or university soon and are maybe starting for the first time and a little bit confused and scared? Or maybe you're not starting for the first time, but maybe would like some extra tips to help your experience be easier and just better overall. Hi, my name is Grace. Today I'm going to go through some of my tips to help with your college or university experience. Um, I did three years of university right out of high school. I am currently, I'm about to start my last semester for my college diploma. So it's so exciting. Um, yes, I live in Canada. So university and college are two different types of schools for me. Um, I know in other places, the words are used interchangeably. Um, but for sake of my experience, they're different. Anyways, not a huge deal because most of my tips will work for either. There's three categories of tips I want to go through today. Uh, the first one is academic. Then we'll go through social and health tips. Um, and then finally, just some other random tips that I think might really help. So let's start with academic. The first tip that I want to give you, and I'm sure you've heard before, um, is take advantage of office hours. Most professors, if not all professors, will have a set aside time for each class or for all their classes um, that they call office hours, which are basically just open hours where anyone can go to their office and ask questions about whatever they've taught in class or some concepts. Uh, but they can be really useful if you are having a hard time in the class. Um, on top of that, if you are going to go to office hours, which I recommend, obviously, um, use your time wisely. A lot of people go to office hours and the professors don't have a lot of time. They're usually only a couple hours. And if everybody takes 20 minutes, then that time fills up really fast. So when you're going, make sure you have specific questions. So if it's, um, say, a math class, make sure you have certain problems that you want to go through with a professor and say, I'm having trouble with this type of problem. Can you please go through this with me and kind of help me understand this better? Or if it's something that's maybe not so literal, um, say like psychology, if you have a specific concept that you're having a really hard time with, um, bring that and say, I'm having a really hard time with this concept. Um, maybe this part of this concept or like, say, an example you gave in class didn't really make a lot of sense. Could you explain that further? Um, things like that to really get to the point and get the information that you need efficiently. Um, another side effect of using office hours is building a relationship with professors. This can be great for the current course that you're taking with that professor. If they get to know you and understand how you work, they might be more inclined to be more lenient with marking, especially if it's um, more interpretive things. I mean, if you get a math problem wrong, you get a math problem wrong. You can't really get extra marks for that. Um, but it'll also help down the line. A lot of programs have a final project or a thesis that you might have to write where you work alongside a professor. So building these relationships early throughout your classes will help you at the end of your program or your area of study, whatever, if you have to choose a professor to work with. Um, this will help you find the professors that really work well with you and then they'll be more inclined to take you as their student for your final project. My second tip, find a way that works for you to organize and visualize your assignments and deadlines. Using physical planners and calendars can be really, really helpful. Uh, I personally was never one that got into planners. I, I tried, I really did try, but it's hard for me to, you know, open it up and look at it every day. But if that's something that works for you, then that's great. It's a great way of looking at things and can also be good for setting day-to-day -day deadlines. You know, if you say, oh, I want to work 25 minutes on this project, you can use that. Um, a way that I used when I was in university was a big wall calendar. Uh, sometimes they'll have the ones that have four months all laid out and you can fill in whatever, September, October, November, December, um, put all the dates in and you can put all your assignment due dates on that calendar. So when you have that up on your wall, if, 
you're crossing off the dates, you can see, oh, I have this assignment due date coming closer. Have you started it yet? No. Okay. Maybe I should start thinking on starting that. Being able to visualize when things are due is so much less stressful than kind of just looking at the date one day and being like, oh my gosh, this huge assignment is due in two days and I haven't even started it. I haven't even thought about it. Um, another way that I've started using more this past year is actually Notion. It takes a little bit of time to get set up, but so do the other methods as well. Um, through this digital platform, you know, it's on my computer. I use my computer every day. I can go into it and also visualize and see, you can make a calendar or just make a list in order of date and see uh, this assignment's due, this assignment's due, this assignment's due, whatever. And then um, plan your working schedule based on that. My third tip, which might be controversial, but I have learned my lesson. Do not buy textbooks before you've gone to the first day of class. I've been burned by this before. A lot of classes and schools will give out the information once you know which classes you have. You can go to the school bookstore and I don't know why I put bookstore in quotes because it's literally a bookstore and they'll say, oh, you need this textbook for this class. You know, the professor's using this textbook for this class. And while that may be true that the professor is going to use that textbook for this class, sometimes it's not necessary. Um, I had an instance where I bought a textbook. I bought every textbook that I could for the classes that I had to then go to the first day of class and the professor say, well, we're like it's optional. So why would I spend my money on a textbook that's optional? Um, another thing is I had another experience where I bought a textbook and then go to first day of class and I need a very specific version of this textbook. I needed the one with the online add-in, which is not the one that I got. Another reason is that there are so many ways to find books online these days and some of them are legal, some of them are not legal. Um, but I know a lot of schools will have a virtual library. So even if you need that textbook, see if you can get it on your school's virtual library. Then you can look on the online textbook. I know sometimes it's better. Uh, it might be easier to have a physical textbook. I really love having physical textbooks, but I'd also rather not spend the 100 to $200 on a textbook that I'm only going to be using for four months. Um, yes, you can resell them, but whatever. That's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah. So check and see if you do need the textbook, if the textbook's available through your school's virtual library, and maybe you can use it there. My fourth tip is to use the school's resources. So the virtual library, um, tutoring, a lot of schools will provide free tutoring for the students. Use that to your advantage if you're having trouble with a class. Um, they'll also host maybe, you know, writing workshops. If you have trouble writing essays, there are ways that you can find people that will help you within the school for free, for free, use it. Other things as well, like computers, there's usually computer labs where you can go use a computer to do whatever you need to do, as well as printers. If something needs to be printed out, you know, handed physically in, you can use the printers at the school. You don't have to buy yourself a printer. Sometimes it's easier if you feel like you're going to be printing off a lot of stuff that might be easier, but schools have resources. And I will say you probably might have to pay for printing, but if you're only doing it a handful of times, it's much cheaper than just buying yourself a printer. Now we can move on to social slash health tips. First tip for social slash health. Uh, don't be afraid to join a club. There's probably loads of different clubs um, that are being hosted by people within your school and within the community that you might have an interest in that you should join. Look into it. Join it. Um, I'm sure most of the time it's not that hard to leave if you don't like it. Um, but it's a great way to meet people. And this might be a great way to also meet people who are not necessarily um, in your program or in your classes. A good way to expand your social circle. Another example of a club, I guess, um, can be a sports team. Don't be afraid to try to join a sports team or at least try out for the sports team. You never know what might happen. Um, I played sports at university. I played lacrosse. It was 
the best decision. I met a lot of my friends there and it was a good way for me to do something that wasn't just school. Um, you know, it was great for my mental health, get some exercise. And not only is there varsity sports, but a lot of schools have intramural sports. So kind of like teams just for fun. Uh, they might have things like hockey or soccer or badminton or even things like dodgeball and uh, volleyball, like things you can do at the school in the gym. You don't necessarily have to travel to like a field or an arena for that. Um, but you can meet another another way to meet more people and have some fun. Another thing, uh, places to learn about all these things is the fairs and events that they have going on at the school. Um, the first week of school fair that most schools usually have, I highly, highly recommend going to these fairs. Um, this fair will give you so much information on the school if you don't already uh, know too much about it. It'll give you information like, you know, what kind of clubs are available, what kind of teams are available for you to join, um, what kind of facilities are within the school, maybe some like, uh, you know, food court options and things like that, or even food places that are around. Um, I know when I was at university, our, our fair, they had vendors from the grocery stores around town, you know, giving you information that like Wednesday is student's day. If you come in and bring your student card, you get an extra 10% off your groceries or stuff like that which you would never know unless you were at that fair. Another thing is they give away a lot of free stuff. A lot of vendors will give away a lot of free stuff that you can just just take and use for whatever you need for. Be that pens or um, pens, pencils, little keychains, whatever. Some stuff's useful, some stuff might be not, but it's free. And when you're a student, you're usually... Uh, pretty broke. So anything free is take what you can get, right? Another thing that you might learn about at these fairs and events, which are also usually put on by um, student union. A lot of schools will have a student union, which you should learn about. Uh, learn about where it is in the school, where the office is, and what kind of services they provide. A lot of uh, student unions will have um, services for students if there's any issues with um, academic integrity, you know, maybe you were accused of plagiarism, whether it's true or not, they will help you go through the process of what that means and um, the things you have to do to fight or deal with those consequences. Okay, last section, just other. Um, my probably most important tip, and I still do to this day, um, and will always do, um, regardless, and I try to do this with new jobs and stuff too, anyways, is walk around campus before your first day. Uh, get to know the campus, get to know where your classes are going to be. Once you get your schedule, you know, if your classes are in person, which I think we're starting to try and get back to now. Um, the last semester that I was at my college, which as I said, this semester I'm going into is my last semester. Before that, everything was online. I didn't have to go, but before I started in my last semester, I went to the school, walked around, tried to find out where my classes were going to be, how far they were between each other, and what other things are around. It can be difficult to know sometimes um, what the building codes mean. And if you're able to get a virtual map of the campus, keep that on your phone. So if you ever get lost, you can always look at it. Um, but a lot of people will help you anyways, if you have any questions, especially within the first couple of weeks of school, there's usually loads and loads of people walking around with like t-shirts that say like peer mentor or something like that. Feel free to ask them questions. That's what they're there for. Um, if you don't know where a class is, ask them, they'll tell you. Or even if you can say, what building is this in? And then you can kind of figure out from there, walk around that building and find the classroom that you're looking for. If this is not common knowledge, um, if you are looking for a classroom and you see that there's different room numbers like 100, 200, 300 something, um, that'll usually be levels. Um, so 100 will be like the ground floor. Then if you 
say you're walking around and you see they're all 100s and your class is a 200 something, you might have to go upstairs. Not sure if that's common knowledge or not, but keep that in mind. And then once you know where all your classes are, try and figure out, I like to do this for myself, a schedule, like what your week's going to look like. Um, like I said before, try and figure out how long it's going to take you to get from class to class. You know, are you maybe going to have to leave class a minute early to get to your other class in time? Or, you know, like a lot of teachers will let class out like 10 minutes before the hour so that that gives you those 10 minutes to get to your next class. Um, you know, is it going to take you 10 minutes to walk to your next class or are you going to have to run or should you maybe bring a bike if you have a bike to bike across campus to the other class? Um, things like that, get to know the campus better. And if you're commuting to and from, see how long of a drive it's going to take you. You know, I'm commuting to school right now. It's a 45 minute drive at least on the days when I have to go in. So I take that into account. You know, if I know I have a class at 8 a.m., I'm probably going to leave at 7 because I for sure want to get there before 8. And if traffic's bad or there's an accident or something, then that might take me up to an hour. So I have that little bit of wiggle room. Um, another thing is when I was in university, I lived in town, but I had to take the bus from home to school. Take a look at the bus schedule. When does it leave? Are you going to have to leave? Like, are you going to have to be there a half an hour early in order to not be late for class? Or I know maybe you don't care about that. Um, I don't like being late. <laughs> That's just me. Um, um, there's a lot of things that go into it that you might not realize, but if you can try and think of these things ahead of time, then you might be in a better off position and not as stressed in at least your first couple weeks until you get to know everything and get more comfortable. That's all I have for now. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I will try and answer them. I also want to do a video about items that you need, items that you don't need, that you think you might need. Um, and also maybe a get ready for school with me to prepant, like get all this shit I need and whatever. Um, and what I keep in my book bag that I take to and from school every day. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.